All right, let's go ahead and get started. Thanks, guys. Thanks for attending. Thanks, guys and gals. I want to say welcome. My name is Silas Peters, founder of Head Trader Seasonal Swing Trader. I want to say, first off, I appreciate your time that you are here today. I understand everybody has commitments and things that they need to be doing. And to the fact that you're here on a Thursday evening shows that you are ready to take your trading education serious and take it to the next level. And I will ask that, you know, feel free to type in all the questions you want, comments, et cetera, during the course of the presentation. <coughs> Excuse me. But I will wait until the end of the presentation to answer those questions. I want to make sure that I respect your time and everybody that is tuned in today learns and understands the strategy. And then, in fact, stick around to the end because we're going to take a look at some setups that happened today with what I'm going to show you. And we'll let the results speak for themselves, if that sounds fair to you. And we'll look at symbols, answer all the questions and all that good stuff. So I want to say thanks for being here. Let's go ahead and get started here. We must always begin by reading the risk disclaimer as required by the regulatory governing bodies and our attorneys. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. So there is substantial risk of loss associated with trading. Only risk capital should be used to trade. So what that means is the Cliff Notes version. Don't trade with your rent money, your mortgage money, your child's educational funds, your milk money, and so on. Trading is risky. You can lose money in trading. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started here. Now's the time you want to shut everything down, remove all your distractions. It means closing browser tabs, logging out of Facebook, putting your phone on mute. We're going to be together for about 60 minutes or so. Even though we are recording, I can never guarantee that technology will cooperate with me. So make sure you listen closely and take good notes. Before we begin, let me formally introduce myself. Simply put, I'm a husband, father, son. I love hanging out with my family, whether it be at the beach, on a boat, hiking, on a golf course. I spend a lot of time working, a lot of time in front of the screen. So I like to get outside and enjoy the outdoors when I can. Richard says, no audio. Can I get some audio checks? Audio checks before I continue. My side says sound is good. All right, poor Richard. I think that's just a, a, a situation on his side. I told him to try F5 or refresh or worst case, log out, log back in. That can go for anybody in case that does happen. Let's keep rocking and rolling here. So just again, show you that I'm not a robot. I am a real human being and I do all, I do what I do for my family. Now, how did I get here? How did I get to where I have the privilege of speaking to you today? Well, in college, and if you can't figure it out, I did go to University of Alabama. I did not put that there to rub that in the face of any of you Buckeye fans out there. I actually did go to Alabama. That's my alma mater. And here I majored in investment finance and economics. But I had no idea where that was going to send or land me. Fortunately, one of my dad's golfing buddies used to be an ex-wheat trader in the grain pits of Chicago. And we were playing golf one day and we started talking. One thing led to another. And he was telling me about what he did and asked me what I was going to do. I had no idea. I had no clue what I was going to do. So I started doing some research. Well, after he told me all the stories of Chicago and the pits and trading, I was intrigued. I was absolutely enamored. I started doing some research on Chicago, the trading floors, and all that. So what did I do? Well, needless to say, I was a bit green on the sleeve when I sold my car three days after graduation, rented a U-Haul, and drove to my new digs in downtown Chicago. Well, this is not just a pretty picture of Chicago. This is actually where I came on a single day and signed my lease on the 23rd floor of Marina City, the two honeycomb towers here overlooking the Chicago River. And when I was here, I was right up here in one of these units. My balcony, I think, was larger than my entire unit. Had Smith and Walensky Steakhouse right down here below. Could barely afford a Fiji water at the place. Had House of Blues tucked in here between us. And then Harry Carey's was a block or two behind me. 
really, really awesome place to be, incredible time while I was there. And actually on the same day I moved in, I took the U-Haul truck back to its depot, I hopped on an Amtrak, and I scalped a couple tickets to the U.S. Open at Olympia Fields in Kohler, Wisconsin to chase Tiger and Phil around. So I like to call that my first trade of Chicago. Now, back to my journey or my career path, my quote unquote first career until this, and I want you to picture this. I was working the Asian, European, and early New York session trade desk. So if you remember me telling you I sold my car, well, that pick right here, this picture right here, literally could be me walking to work around 6 p.m., 2 a.m., or if I got off early, maybe 6 a.m. I remember on numerous occasions, me walking down the middle of LaSalle Street, right here, nobody but me in a snowblower in the entire city of Chicago, coming into the Board of Trade, and the temperature reading a solid negative something degrees. And remember, I am just a boy from deep south Alabama on the Gulf of Mexico. I was not prepared for Chicago weather. When we got into the teens or the 20s, it was like a godsend of warmth. It was getting very warm. We looked forward to the 20s. That's how bad it was. So I did this right here for a few years working at the Board of Trade, handling some serious trade size across the Board of Trade, the Merck, Nibot, NYMEX, and various London Asian and German exchanges for our hedge fund, banks, CTAs, trading everything from corn to copper to hogs, euro dollars, and Japanese government bonds. Incredible learning experience, both with markets and trading, as well as the Chicago big city life. But I decided to head back south when some other opportunities opened up. And that's when I went truly corporate. I went from a fast paced and somewhat stressful hedge fund trade desk to more slower paced life, managing equity and fixed income portfolios and other investment management roles. To me, this was extremely boring, but it was the safe route. This is me working in this glass building here. But I miss the action and the excitement of the pits, the tape, the screens. So through some additional contacts, I was then led to a day trading firm where I helped run operations, execution, trading, education right here to running a couple of futures brokerage firms. And then ultimately working in a family office serving ultra high net worth individuals doing a hodgepodge of all of these things right here. So it's safe to say I've seen a lot of the spectrum in the finance world. But honestly, I was just not that happy. <clears throat> I still miss trading, <clears throat> excuse me, in the trading world. Me sitting in an office tied to a desk, looking out the window, and of course, dealing with the typical corporate red tape was just not in my blood. I wanted to get back to the markets, to the charts, to the trading. And while I was still trading during this time, I truly miss being in the weeds of the markets, following the charts, doing the analysis, and so on. So I left the corporate world and I started Seasonal Swing Trader, where I publish research and analysis to my followers, and it holds myself and our community accountable each and every day. But let's talk about the journey. There were certainly some painful lessons to be learned. I grew accounts, blew accounts, grew accounts, blew accounts. I quickly learned I was not a trading god. I was not above the market. The market does not care about my position, and it certainly did not care about my opinion or what I think it should do. What does that mean? It meant blown accounts, emotional trading, acting like a gunslinger, poor risk management. These are all battle scars along the way. And in this workshop, I'm going to attempt to help you think smart, logical, with a proven price action strategy and plan so you can avoid the many mistakes that I, and I'm sure several of you are making today. But why are you here? You're here to have or learn a reliable pattern for all market conditions, have a strategy for all asset classes, to be agnostic of market bias. In today's markets, it's imperative to make certain that we have a strategy that can trade both ways. We want to employ strategies that can profit during up markets, down markets, and sideways markets, and do so without guessing. So today, I'm going to show you a pattern that results in trend reversals, 
show you where the point of a trend is likely to reverse. And I'm going to show you a pattern with the least risk and highest reward. Everybody wants to see that. If that sounds good. Let's go. So not only are you ready to learn a strategy that is low risk and high reward, but also works in all markets, all time frames, asset classes, market conditions, and styles. I don't want to sit here and teach you a strategy that only works on a one minute Bitcoin chart or a weekly Facebook chart or a four hour crude chart. I'm going to show you a simple and straightforward strategy that works in any market, in any condition, whether it's ranging, consolidation, contraction, expansion, low vol, high vol. I don't care if you're a tick trader, scalper, day trader, swing trader, position trader, you trade the underlying contract, call options, put options, debit spreads, credit spreads, or reverse crouching tiger, hidden dragons. I don't really care. I'm gonna, what I'm going to show you is powerful, and I'm going to prove it to you. Before we continue, it's important that we cover the process. Has anybody here heard of Jesse Livermore, reminiscence of a stock operator? If you haven't, I would encourage you to go to Amazon and pick up a copy for under 10 bucks. It's a great read. Who here has read the book? All right, Richard is still having problems. He replied to him one last time. All right, yeah, okay, absolutely. So a lot of you have. But a question I often receive is, what do you think about the markets here? And what do you think, where do you think XYZ is going or ABC? My typical response is, I don't know. I don't know and I don't care. And that may sound a bit harsh, but it, maybe it sounds ill-informed especially when you're asked by your friends or your in-laws, other family members, but it's true. For the most part, I really don't care about the, the daily news that flows in and out of the market. I'm a trader that trades strategies based off probabilities. So I want to forget about the market assumptions and only focus and trade with high probability strategies and what is actually in front of us. No more predicting. Successful traders possess three traits. We must realize that knowing what is going on in the news and knowing how to make money consistently are two separate things. For successful traders, it's about your strategy, your logic, and your process. It doesn't matter what you think the market is going to do tomorrow. And I realize it's a very difficult concept for maybe a newbie trader to understand or even seasoned traders or investors. I certainly want to form my own opinion. It's just human nature, but it took me years to figure this out. See, it doesn't pay for us to try to absorb every financial story out there or slap every indicator onto a chart. All I care about is when the markets I am following reach key criteria. But there's one more trait, because if I allow probabilities and not talking heads to define my next move, we need to really possess and control one more trait, and that is patience. We as traders know that trades should never be forced. We know that a forced trade is not a statistically sound trade. We are in this for the long game, and patience is expected if we wish to bring in profits over the long term. That may sound boring to you aggressive traders out there, but I'm more interested in the profitable trades, not trying to be a short-term hero who tries to trade every scenario. I am confident in trades that consist of key criteria that are setting up. And we are talking about extremely high probability trades. Patience is the key ingredient to the success of the strategy. What is a high probability strategy? It's one that requires patience coupled with a disciplined approach, waiting for the appropriate scenario to unfold with a high probability of success. It recognizes that opportunities are made up easier than losses. So if we let a few passes by, we don't dwell on what coulda, shoulda, coulda. There's always gonna be more opportunities around the corner. Lastly, I realize that the less I trade, the better my strategy will likely perform over the long term. And the long term is what matters. The likelihood here is what makes my probability strategy unique and successful. And then, of course, patience. So what indicators do I successfully trade? What is the secret sauce? Siles, what are the ingredients? 
Well, I learned on early on to keep it simple. We pick a few indicators and we try to follow them forever. Can't tell you how many traders approach me that want to follow Donchi channels, market profile, GAN, Bolger bands, FIB retracements. The list goes on and on. There's nothing wrong with that. But this high probability strategy uses price action alone plus one very common and basic and free, I might add, indicator, along with a couple of pro tips to take advantage of sentiment and technical extremes. So who here has seen Jerry Maguire? Love it or hate it, this is a famous line. No, I am not going to stand up on a table and scream and yell the way he does annoyingly in the movie because I can't show you the money. I don't know how you trade but I will show you the opportunity. So let's get to it. It is, drum roll please, divergence. Wow, what a new concept, right? No, of course not. Who here has heard, heard of divergence? And before I get the haters typing in, this is, this is not new, this is subjective. Well, I'll challenge you right now to stick around, stay to the end, and I'll show you what is so powerful about what I'm gonna show you. So divergence is what? It's when the price of an asset is moving in the opposite direction of a technical index indicator, such as an oscillator, or is moving contrary to other data. Divergence warns us that the current trend may be weakening and in some cases may lead to price changing direction. So basically it's an indicator price being in disagreement using any relevant indicator, such as a MACD, RSI, et cetera. It's an indication of reversals or a continuation, but more often a reversal. Let's talk about the details. It can occur between the price of an asset and almost any technical or fundamental indicator. It's typically used by traders when the price is moving in the opposite direction of a technical indicator. Positive divergence occurs when the price is moving lower, but a technical indicator is moving higher or showing bullish signals. Negative divergence occurs when the price is moving higher but a technical indicator is moving lower or showing bearish signals. Why is it important? Because it's the earliest indication of a reversal, a good sign to exit, a good sign to scale, and it means that we're usually buying near the bottom or selling near the top. Hint, hint, that means the risk on our trades are very small relative to our potential reward. Types of divergences, we first have Classic divergences, sometimes called regular, both bullish and bearish. Bullish divergence is when price action is making a flat bottom or lower low and a higher low of the oscillator. Bearish divergence is when price action makes a flat top or a higher high and a lower high on oscillator. Traders use divergence to assess the underlying momentum on the price of an asset and for assessing the likelihood of a price reversal. Traders conclude that when we have, say, lower lows in a stock price and losing their downward momentum, a trend reversal may soon follow. We also have what we call hidden divergences, both bullish and bearish. Hidden bullish divergence is when price action is making higher lows, but lower lows on our oscillator. So normally what we see in an uptrend, and hidden bullish divergence is telling us that the oscillator is recharging to go back up again, or it's the continuation of an uptrend. Hidden bearish divergence when price action is making higher lows and higher highs on the oscillator. And this is what we'd normally see in a downtrend. Hidden bearish divergence tells us that the oscillator is creating space to go back down or is possibly the continuation of a downtrend. Let's look at some examples. Let's talk about regular divergences first. This is an example of a regular bullish divergence. It's the most frequent and is usually considered a sign of a reversal. If the price is making lower lows, but the oscillator is making higher lows. Now, we don't need a series of lower lows. We only need one low to be lower than the previous low. And this can usually be found near bottoms. Hidden bullish divergence is a trend following type of divergence. If the price is making a higher low, but the oscillator is making a lower low, this can be seen when the price is in an uptrend and indicates that the price may tend to go higher. Regular bearish divergence. This is the most frequent on the bearish side, usually considered a sign of a trend reversal when the price is making higher highs, but the oscillator is making lower highs, and it can typically found, be found near tops. 
Hidden bearish divergence is a trend following type. When the price is making lower highs, high, lower high, the oscillator is making higher highs, high, or excuse me, high, higher high. This can be typically seen when the price is in a downtrend and indicates that the price may continue its downtrend. Let's talk about identifying trend strength and let's consider the following scheme here. At point one, buyers are stepping in because they believe that a trend has begun and they want to make money. So they open long positions and they start to drive the price higher. The trend accelerates as more and more buyers are jumping into the market. At point two, the buyers begin to take profits and the trend weakens. Buyers are still dominating, but they calm down a bit because they're afraid that the trend is coming to an end. At point three is when we have a situation where no more buyers are stepping into the market and the trend is likely to reverse and sellers are stepping in and are stepping in with force and they start to dominate the market. Now, we can use tools to help us recognize trend and trend strength. And one of those can be found with the popular RSI, Relative Strength Indicator. I believe that the standard rule of thumb, if you will, is when the RSI rises above 70, the market's considered to be overbought. When the RSI falls below 30, the market's considered to be oversold. It's a great concept, but we want to use the RSI in a slightly different way. Let's look at the same chart. There are two significant highs labeled A and B on the price chart, as well as in the corresponding high in the RSI window pane, A and B. The price chart, we see that B is higher than A. That means that the price is likely going higher. And the RSI pane is just the opposite. B is lower than A. Lower than A means that the trend has weakened or is likely going to reverse. And lo and behold, what happened? The market actually reversed. Now, we use the RSI in the previous example, but it can be replaced with any momentum indicator such as CCI, stochastics, MACD, and so on. All of these indicators are derived from price, so there's no better or worse indicator. It's really about preference. It doesn't matter what indicator you want to call your best friend. Every approach is equally good. Let's go back and focus on what matters, which is the divergence concept. For us to go deeper and take a deeper dive, let's quickly recap for context. Bulls divergence when price makes two significant lows, but the second is lower. RSI makes two significant lows, but the second is higher. Bears divergence, price makes two significant highs, but the second is higher. RSI is making two significant highs, but the second is lower. All right. We previously defined that divergence is a discrepancy between price and indicator movement. Now note we've added the MACD to the chart. So when the price is making a new low, low, new low, but the MACD makes a higher low, we have bullish divergence signaling that the trend is likely to reverse. Low, higher low. This is an example of classic or regular divergence. The black line on the price is sloping down. The black line on the MACD is sloping up. Now, the depth of the divergence is a bit more of a subjective term. When you look at this example, you see two divergence patterns, a bullish and a bearish. The first one here is nice, but the second one doesn't look as promising because the two peaks or troughs on the MACD are not very significant. We consider a divergence to be deep if the MACD crosses the zero line. Such a divergence provides a much stronger signal for a trend reversal. Now, on this chart, we see two div patterns. First example is almost a double bottom. The second example has a more defined peaking action. When we peak, the MACD line crosses the zero line. Rises back up, forms our second peak, which is lower than the first, thus giving us our divergence pattern. And because it did cross the zero line, this means that it is a higher quality div pattern. So now we know the basics of divergence. Let's look at ways we can approach divergence in a smart 
and methodical manner. We've discovered that div patterns can lead to consolidation, corrections, or full trend reversals. And that's great, but we also need a definitive plan about where to enter, where to place stop losses, and where to exit. Because with this strategy, you can make a quick profit on a small correction or minor trend reversals, or try and capture major market moves. And when the trend reverses, it's every trader's goal to try and stay with the trend for as long as possible. But quickly, we want to see what other traders see. Sometimes chart pattern traders see a double top. Elliott wave traders may see a short and fifth wave instead. But they all refer to the same thing, the divergence pattern. This is what chart pattern traders see. This is what Elliott wave traders see. This is what we see. Most traders don't realize that MACD or RSI, or RSI divergence is exactly what they're looking for. Our approach removes the subjectivity because the divergence pattern is well defined. Let's talk about entry. Let's look at this into even greater detail with some charts. Entry. Where or how do we even enter these trades? So there's a couple different ways we can consider entries. The first is just a very simple enter on next candle open. So we wait for the divergence candle to close right here, and we enter on the next bar or candle open. Another method is to wait for a candlestick confirmation. That is, we wait for a bearish candlestick or engulfing candle for short positions, or a bullish candle or bullish engulfing candle for long positions. Now, we discussed entry, but we must cover the least fun or exciting aspect of trading, but by far the most important, and that is stop losses or risk management. One could argue all day the best place to put stop losses, but we want to keep things simple and objective. So for a stop loss with this strategy, we can place it just above the bearish divergence pattern or just below the bullish divergence pattern. We'll talk about this here in a bit, but you want to give it a little bit of a buffer. We'll cover that in more detail later. In this example, we can see that the second turning point right here, or the point of divergence, is, is acting as a minor resistance point from which price uses to retrace. And we are thus protected from being stopped out too soon. So we've covered entry, we've covered stop losses, but now let's get to the fun part. And that's where we're looking to take profits or putting targets. Now, our first goal is to make a profit before the market turns against us. We don't need to shoot for the moon here. So we don't need to place the first profit target too far. It's wise to place the profit target at a significant support or resistance area, or what I like to call price structure. This keeps us from guessing an arbitrary amount of ticks or points. Do you see this price structure right here? Does everybody see that? Now, the divergence valley is a great place for profit taking. Notice we have very clear price structure here at these levels, and price is likely to gravitate towards these areas like a magnet. And it's no coincidence that prices have reactions at these levels. So by taking profits at these levels, we can profit from these patterns that result in quick minor trend changes or corrections. And we can make consistent profits based purely on this technique alone. But divergence pattern, as we know, can lead to complete trend reversals. And we want to take advantage of these trends that can occur, which we'll cover momentarily. Candles, when we have a candlestick reversal pattern or an opposite diversion pattern appears, that can also serve as a good place to exit. Notice that we basically need, met our price our profit objective right here. That's the next area of structure. We sold up here, but we had a reversal candle right here. Now, sometimes the market will come down or come up to our take profit levels right up to the take profit levels and we're not filled and we'll get a reversal. That's a smart and wise area 
to take profits off the table, at least half your position, a third, two thirds, because it means that price is rejecting, sellers are stepping in, buyers are stepping in, and we want to protect some of our profit. We simply close our partial position and not wait until price reaches the take profit level. Let's look at this next example. Here's our entry point. We can see price has lurched all the way up to our valley area or take profit level, but put in a bearish reversal pattern right near the TP level. Price retraced a bit, came back up to that level a second time. What happened? Put in another bearish reversal candle. But this time, the, it drifted all the way back down to the stop out area. So this is why it's a good idea to consider taking or closing part of our positions here and not getting greedy for those last few points, pips or ticks. Now, another great way to trade the strategy is to add a couple of moving averages to the chart. Here I've added an eight and a 34. An eight is the green or the fast line. The red is the, is the 34 or the slow. First look at this example shows that the candle pattern, candlestick reversal right here, was possibly a solid place to exit. And it is. It's a great place to exit. But there's room for improvement. Notice that when we add that 8 and 34, the trade or the price trades right into the slope EMA, reverses, and we have a chance to re-enter the market and continue to ride the trade lower into profit all while stair-stepping above the swing highs along the way until we get stopped out or we have an MA crossover. So now we've seen numerous examples of how to catch quick moves as well as larger trend moves. The most popular approach among traders that I see, they want to exit at a certain number of ticks or points or pips. And that is really the wrong way because as you know, every market and every time frame has different volatility. So it makes no sense to go for an arbitrary 100 pips or five points on the S&P or seven points on or seven dollars on a stock because volatility changes over time and it changes over time for each instrument. Now, you can back test and do all of this you know, strategy testing to learn that individual's market's movement or rhythm, but there's really an easier, more uh, less subjective way. And how is that? Well, the first one, again, is just using plain old vanilla price structure. Valleys and dips as significant areas of support or resistance. And then candlestick patterns, candlestick reversal patterns, reversal patterns. And then lastly, using the MA strategy as you're managing the balance. Before we move, now we move on to false divergences. How do we filter false divergences? We know that when traders are trying to jump in a new trend, they typically want to see some confirmation. And we know that a trend reversal can be confirmed with a divergence breakout. And to many traders, that divergence is confirmed when we have minor support or resistance broken. There's nothing wrong with this but the entry can be too far away from the start of the move and the risk can be too high when compared to the profit. And remember, our goal is to limit risk. So where we are looking to get in right here, we're looking to take profits right here. But those breakout traders are looking to sell here. Breakout traders are looking to buy here. We're looking to buy here and sell where they're getting in. We don't say that that entry technique is wrong, but there's a way to achieve more consistent profits because where most traders are looking to enter, we're looking to take quick profits. Now, I want to remind you that sometimes the MACD histogram can look choppy, quickly reversing up and down, implying that a market is in a chop zone. It can generate a long series of false divergent signals. I'm going to show you how to overcome that. First off, is if you're out there scouring, the, the internet boards looking for a chop indicator. Well, this is a free one right here. Add the MACD. This is your chop zone. Clearly choppy, clearly choppy, clearly a trend, clearly a trend, clearly a trend. So that's all you need to know if the market is in chop or not. 
Now, to prevent overtrading, we found a way to recognize clear patterns. Our gold rule says that the signal line must be crossed by two peaks. Look at chart one. Look at chart one on the left. You see how the signal line crosses zero line? Peak, we cross the zero line, came back up. Now look at chart two on the right. There's no crossing of the zero line. Now back to entries. Our goal is to enter as soon as possible after the div pattern has formed. Our strategy gives us a signal after the MACD hook right here, or what I call the turning point. Only after the MACD hook has formed, you'll recognize that the second peak on the MACD histogram. That's where we recommend to enter on the next candle open. A very simple and mechanical rule. See how we have this hook pattern? That's our turning point, a very simple and mechanical rule. But we further fine tune this into an even more reliable method. This is by using trend lines. Experience has shown me that trend lines can be used as a great confirmation tool for any trading strategy. So when looking for a long, we draw a trend line on the chart by connecting the minor highs. We place a buy stop order just above the trend line. When looking for a short, we draw a trend line on the chart by connecting the minor lows. We place a sell stop just below the trend line. And stick around because I'm going to show you that example in today's markets. And when the price breaks the trend line, we're in. This entry is almost the same as the quick entry on the next candle open method, but sometimes it protects us from the false MACD hook when the MACD turns again and continues to fall. So it may be a bit discretionary, but it is the most effective way to enter, in my opinion. And here's another example, but this time to the sell side, we place a, a small trend line on the chart right here. We enter on a sell stop or wait for a confirmation retest of the trend line break. Let's recap everything you've learned. You've learned high probability reversal strategy, where to enter, where to place risk, and where to take profits, as well as how to filter false setups. How do professionals trade it? Have you ever wondered why the market turns against you when you jump on a promising trend? The most tempting signal is likely a trap. As there are no more buyers to move the market, the sellers dominate. As there are no more sellers to move the market, the buyers dominate. Divergence masters know to enter in the opposite direction just before the trend turns. And that leads me to this quote. Disregard the majority opinion is probably wrong. Yes, following the herd may work sometime. Think of the 90s tech bubble, worked until it didn't. Work 2000s real estate boom, worked until it didn't. Crypto mania of the 2010s. But do you really want to be the one chasing new highs when you have a high probability strategy of selling them or panicking at market lows when you could possibly be buying at a substantial discount with much lower risk? When you trade this way, your winning batting average could be sub 50 percent. Yes, you don't have to be right 50 percent of the time. You don't even have to be right 40 percent of the time when risk reward is overwhelmingly skewed in your favor. But here are some additional pearls of wisdom. Remember, the less you trade, the more money you're likely going to make. We want to filter the unreliable patterns and focus only on the strongest signals. And moreover, we want to use a customizable indicator that can deal with this for us, where the process of recognizing the patterns in the chart are done for us automatically. And we sit back and we enjoy the various exit levels and find out what suits our trading style the best. But how do we do it? Well, we can scout for quick profits on the lower time frames, or swing or position trade on the higher time frames. We can trade as many markets or asset classes as we wish, but again, we must be patient because patience pays in this game. How do we do it? Wow, silence, too many markets. Too many time frames. Don't have enough time. Well, we've now developed a time saving solution so that traders can live their lives, not worrying about scouring through dozens or thousands of symbols, dozens of time frames, and scrutinizing hundreds of charts and trying to determine if what we're eyeballing is actually divergence or not. We've cracked the code and simplified the process. How? 
who's ready to trade like a professional, stand out from the crowd, and treat trading like a business that it is. Who here is ready to have that opportunity? Take a swig of water. Ah, oh, Richard, Richard, <laughs> my boy Richard is back, says the sound is good. He posted that about 15 minutes in. All right, awesome. A lot of you flooding in saying, yes, 2020 is over. We're into 2021. Now is the most important time if you're ready to take action. I'm proud to introduce the Divergence Dominator Pro Package. DD Pro is a fully complete, comprehensive trading business in a box solution. Let me guide you through what the Divergence Dominator Pro Package is so you can see what all you're getting. You're gonna get the turning point identifier indicator, what I call the TPI, the DD Pro Scanner, Price Action Pro Trading Course, Candlestick Pattern, Divergence Cheat Sheet, DD Pro Trade Journal, and the TPI Fast Slow, Fast Slow Line Cheat Sheet. Oh my gosh, it sounds like a lot. You're probably overwhelmed. What is it? Well, great question. I'm glad you asked. First one is the TPI indicator. It's an indicator that auto plots divergence setups locating multiple turning points across multiple markets and multiple time frames. Well, it'd be helpful maybe if we saw an example. So let's take a look. This is the TPI indicator in action. We pull up our favorite chart, attach the TPI indicator, and bam, instead of scouring, we have it on our chart. Notice the bullish divergence line here, the bearish divergence line here. Here's our TPI buy signal. Here's the TPI sell signal. Daily chart of IBM. Here's a daily chart of the US yen. Here's our TPI buy signal. Here's a TPI sell signal, TPI buy signal. TPI sell signal. Here's a five minute chart of the British pound. Here's a TPI buy signal. Here's a TPI sell signal. What platforms do we have it available on? How about Thinkorswim, TradeStation, NinjaTrader 8, TradingView, and MT4? Here's what it looks like on Thinkorswim. Here's our TPI indicator down below, TPI sell signals. Here's a TPI buy signal. Here's a TPI buy signal. Can everybody see this? Type something in, please, if you could see this. Trade station. Uh, no, it's the, you don't get the boxes. The boxes, that's, that's what I drew for a visual reference. The TPI is down below. Trade station, TPI buy signal, TPI sell signals, Ninja Trader 8. TPI buy signals, TPI buy signals, TPI sell signals, TPI buy, TPI buy, TPI sell. Trading view, TPI sell, you see that down here. TPI buy, TPI sell, the market trades the downside. MT4, TPI sell signal, TPI sell signal, TPI buy signal, TPI buy signal. You see how simple and effective that is. The DD Pro Scanner, we don't want to have to locate these setups manually. If you've been trading for any time, you know that manually identifying divergence patterns or anything is difficult and time consuming, especially when you analyze multiple markets in multiple time frames. Now, we've had this scanner built for TradeStation, NinjaTrader 8, and, and I am pleased to tell you a little secret. We just finished Think or Swim today. We just finished Think or Swim today. But you are the first, literally first people to know that other than my programmer. Still work on a little th couple things, but it is ready. And I'm glad because I use TOS. So that's why we had a scanner to eliminate some of the grunt work. Here is what it looks like on TradeStation scanning markets for you. And again, on NinjaTrader 8. So when combined, when you combine the TPI indicator and the scanner, it's capable of identifying divergence patterns using all asset classes, all time frames, all chart types for scalpers, day traders, swing traders, and position traders. But aside from the indicator and scanner, I really feel like the crown jewel of the Divergence Dominator Pro package 
is my Price Action Pro Trading course. This is a never before released course. You're going to get immediate access to a 10 part on demand video training module. This is my only full step A to Z training course focused on trading pure price action. How do I how to find and identify the most important areas to even consider being a buyer or seller, removing the uncertainty all by trading in conjunction with the TPI. So do you want to quit guessing? Do you want to feel confident about your entries? Remove your emotions, think like a professional, scale your reward versus risk, have a solid trading plan. If so, that will be covered and satisfied with the PAP course. It has all the solutions to help you with each of these bullet points. PAP can help solve those troubles in a comprehensive step-by-step on-demand video module that can be viewed over and over again. Next, you're also going to get the candlestick pattern recognizer. Yeah, everybody knows candles, basic candles. This is not your grandma's guide to candlesticks. We know that there are dozens of candle formations or patterns out there. This guide is short and sweet and only covers the most important patterns that you should focus on. It's a PDF manual that can be downloaded and printed off for your desk reference and study. Everything from the ins and outs, the structure, how to interpret, and more. The version sheet sheet, another incredible part of the DD Pro package. You can also download and print. This is great for those that like written descriptions and summaries, but can also accompany all video modules. So with the Divergence Dominator Pro, you're going to get the TPI indicator, the DD Pro scanner, candlestick recognizer guide, Divergence sheet sheet, the DD Pro trade journal, and the TPI fast slow line cross. I'm going to go over all that at the end of the presentation. So what is all of this worth? What is all this worth to you? If you're now able to profit in any market condition, if you can anticipate major market reversals and turning points, what if you could on your time scalp day swing or position trade? What if you now had all of the tools scanners, indicators, videos, and trading guides. DD Pro does all of the hard work for you. You no longer have to guess, but let's determine or not whether this is a fit for you. Oops. My slide froze up. If you like scalping on nanosecond charts from dust till dawn, if you love to be stressed out, if you get a thrill of blowing out accounts over and over again, or if you have a gambling mindset and have no clue what the market is doing, that's probably not for you. This is probably not for you, and that's okay. We can part ways, best wishes, but let's determine if this is a fit. If you're ready to think like a professional trader, you're ready to remove your gambling mindset, you're ready to get serious, and you're ready to kick your emotions to the curb, and have confidence each and every time you trade, then the Divergence Dominator Pro package could be for you. Now, the Divergence Dominator Pro package, the TPI indicators alone cost over $2,000 to develop and build out. The TPI scanners cost over $1,500. The PAP course and all of its contents have over a $500 value. The cheat sheets, guides, bonus materials are another $400 plus, and that brings the total value to over $4,400. In fact, $4,427. But we're obviously not going to charge $4,427. We're not even going to charge $2,999, $1,999, or even $997. I am so proud of this indicator, the price action course, and all of the educational material. I want to get this out to those that are serious, those that are tired of kicking tires, tired of jumping endlessly from system to system, those that are ready to remove the emotions, and most importantly, ready to take action and see real 
results in their accounts. So as part of this live webinar special, we're pleased to offer this to the first 25 signups, a single one-time payment of $397. The offer link is seasonalswingtrader.com forward slash pro. I'm gonna put that into the chat. Seasonalswingtrader.com forward slash pro. There you go, Bob T. Yes, it's a one-time fee of $397. Offer link is seasonalswingtrader.com forward slash pro. What are you gonna get? You're gonna get the turning point identifier for Thinkorswim, TradeStation, NinjaTrader 8, TradingView, and MT4, the DD Pro Scanner for TradeStation and NinjaTrader 8, and top secret, Thinkorswim. It is in the members area, but I have not made any announcement. Price Action Pro Course On Demand, Candlestick Pattern Recognizer Guide, the DD Pro Trade Journal, TPI Slow Fast Line Cheat Sheet, and the Divergence Master Cheat Sheet. So it's 90% off the $4,400 value. You're going to get the indicator suite, the scanner, the course, all the guides. You own it for life for all platforms. I'm going to get to all of your questions, guys and gals. But I like to cover this quickly. I get asked all the time, Siles, how do you trade these setups? Well, the easy answer is that it depends on the setup. It depends on my overall outlook of the market. Do I want to be more focused to the shorter term, more intermediate, more position based? What other positions I may have on in the risk reward ratio of that setup? But I like to trade credit spreads on equities and commodities, but I also trade debits on all markets as well. And I also trade the underlying in both futures and FX. But let me say that what or how I trade really doesn't matter. Frankly, you should never be concerned with what I'm doing. If you have a question or idea, and I don't mean to sound, I don't mean for that to come off the wrong way, but you shouldn't be concerned about what anybody's doing. If you have a question about a setup or an idea or a market, you can email me anytime. My email is support at seasonalswingtrader.com, even if you become a member today or not. But at the end of the day, you are in control of your own accounts, how much capital you have, your knowledge, your risk tolerance, and your time that you can personally commit. That's something that myself or your neighbor, or your trading buddy, whoever cannot answer. That's something that you have to determine for yourself. I'm going to put this offer slide back up again, and I'm going to dive into all of your questions. We got a lot of them, and I appreciate your patience. I appreciate your interest. Take a squig of water here. And I'm excited about looking at some charts with you and showing you some of today's action. I know a lot of people always want to see what they're getting into as far as, you know, when it comes to the members area and such. So here's the members area. Very clean, straightforward and simple. Here's your turning point. Uh, here's all of your indicators. Here's your scanner. Look at that. That was not here as of this morning and then your installation guides now full disclaimer i did make an installation guide for the tpi arrows i have not yet made the guide for the tpi fast slow line uh scan and I'm, i'll talk about all that answer your questions i'm not running think or swim right now on my computer uh i was worried about the webinar acting acting a little fudgy with me um on this laptop that i'm on but I, have, I do have TradingView pulled up, so we'll look at some, we'll look at the uh, DD Pro on TradingView. Here's your Price Action Pro <coughs> course modules, all right here, and here's all of your resources, bonuses, cheat sheets, and more. So I know I know there's some questions about this slow fast line. It probably confused you, and uh, don't don't worry about it. Um, we'll, we'll cover that. Let me see. The boxes uh, SP on on that uh, slide was think or swim, and that was just showing you uh, the area of the buy or sell based on the arrows down in the uh, box. I mean, in the window in the uh, TPI pane. 
how often does the signal fail? Well, it really depends on how you trade it. What may fail for you may not fail for me or may not fail for me or may not fail for Susie. Uh, it just depends on how you trade it and, and how you get in. And we talk about ways in the price action pro trading course right here. This is how we trade. This is the these are the core ingredients of a strategy. And really, if if I might be doing myself a disservice by saying this, but even if you don't want to use the TPI indicator, you can learn, I think, everything that you need to learn in this price action pro course, what, regardless of how you trade or what you use to trade. But that this right here, combined with the TPI indicator, is something very, very special. And it's the way I trade. Uh, Mark, you know, good, good uh, comment. Mark says, I've always found it to be a very iffy signal. Well, I think, and, and, I don't, and I don't mean to go back to this, but when you have the, the TPI buy sell signal on your chart and you're trading in conjunction with the principles laid out in the PAP course, you're not going to question the trade. You're, it's not going to be iffy. You're either going to be in or you're going to be out. Of course, some setups look better than others. And that just comes with experience, but you'll be very pleased. Yes, Elena, you do get the scanner. Appreciate it, Swen. Uh, is there a way to get to ask questions or get clarifications? You could ask me right now, Pat. I'll be happy to answer those. That's what I'm doing right now, going through all of the questions. <clears throat> this is not a subscription. No renewal. It's a one-time fee. You own it for life. <clears throat> Let's pull up a chart while I'm answering questions. How often do the signals appear? I get that question a lot. And it all depends on the market environment, right? Most indicators are going to generate a signal based on what the market is doing. Now, it also depends on your time frame. If you're on a one minute time frame, you're going to get a lot more signals than a hour, hourly or four hour or daily or weekly. Uh, so this is the TPI fast slow line. OK, we'll talk about that in a second. Let's look at some. The TPI fast slow line is what helps generate these buy and sell signals. So here's a 10 minute chart of the yen. We can see that. Uh, we had, this is a 10 minute today. We had a sell, looks like this goes back into yesterday's uh, afternoon blowback session. Had something here, it looks like in the Asian session, possibly Asian or early European session. And then we had a sell at around 6.30. Those are the only signals on the 10 minute today. And very quickly, when I look at this, I plot just a simple little trend line. You don't have to do that. I found that to be the, one of the most reliable ways, as discussed, as discussed in the presentation. Now, um, I, I'm glad you that you asked this. Joe P is about how to to using it to trade binaries. Notice that every one of these signals depending on your binary expiration. I don't really trade binaries, but mo they would have ended out of the money, which means you get to keep the premium that you received or whatever the proper term is on binary options. Now, um, let's just quickly go through some of the 10 minute charts today on the currencies. I, I love the 10 minute chart. And if I'm not getting action, we can go down to the five minute or the one minute. So we had a trade here uh, around 6.30, 6.40, Aussie, 77.80. And you can see this is our first target right here. And look at where it reversed. Popped. It did go lower, but that's my first target. Let's go to the pound. We had a buy signal today on the pound. We had uh, we would have been targeting right here at this area. It didn't quite get there, but we were we did where we were able to get some points there. Canadian dollar. We had a sell signal right here, did go lower. 
did go higher as well before it went lower. The euro, so we had a little bit of uh, spiky action around here. We had jobless claims, I don't trade around news. The yen, we had, oh, we just looked at the yen. Uh, let's see, let's look at the, let's look at the S&P, S&P. Let's go to continuous. And then let's look at, look at Bitcoin selling off there. Uh, S&P today, we did not have anything today in the S&P. This was our last sell signal and it proved to be a nice trade. This was, uh, I guess, in the Asian session, early European session. Let's see if we had anything on the five minute anything on the five minute so we had here within the past hour we had a buy signal a nice little scalp there had a nice buy here we had a nice buy here um pre-new york session in the asian session right there let's look at our friend crude oil i like so i like the uh currency major currencies that trade up the globex currencies you know the majors Aussie pound, uh, CAD, Euro, Yen, uh, Swissy, S&P, gold, crude, and bonds uh, for intraday uh, markets. Let's look at crude oil today. Uh, while we're here, let's just look at the five minute. We had a nice trade to the upside, nice sell to the downside, sell to the downside, buy to the upside. Let's take a look at the yield 10 minute. So here we had uh, some funky movement right there. Uh, here's some of these nice sell signals coming in. Now let's look at a one minute. And you can see how thin it is right now, but it, that 10 cents there, matter of minutes. Let's get, let's get to where some uh, actual liquidity was. A little bit of a trade here, uh, a little bit of a down move there. This is in the last hour or so of the day. Nice sell signal. Sell signals coming in. Buy signals coming in. Let's see. Sell signals coming in. Sell signals coming in. And then we had buy signals coming in. Nice trades there. Uh, ZB. I'll look at the bonds for you. Come on, Bessie. There we go. So we had um, buy, uh, buy here at two o'clock. Used to be the old pit close. Here we had something uh, again. I think that's midnight. So, you know, you see this little uh, trend line. I do respect the trend lines. Look at what happened. Nice down drift. Here was a sell signal here. Notice as we were marching up, we get the break. And we have a nice little scalp trade to the downside. Uh, yeah, I'll look at your charts here. Um, yes, absolutely, Patrick. You, of course, can ask questions anytime. My email address is support at seasonalswingtrader.com. We have sold 11 units this evening. We limit this to 25 people. Have to explain why, because I'm not a one man shop, but I do actually monitor and manage my own support inbox. I actually read everything that comes in. I'll reply to you personally, but I, I do have a support guy that helps out really with the technical stuff. Like I can't get in, my password's not working, how to reset my password those kinds of things he can even do a remote session with you if you need it to help install these on any platforms install this on any platforms uh that's that's just part of the service uh no our support does not end after 60 days 365 days you get support for life we don't plan on going anywhere knock on wood we'll continue to support you all the way through from now until if you have a question a week later, six months later, a year later, five years later, we will certainly help. Uh, let's look at some of your markets. Quickly, I want to show you a couple of things that I got in today. 
I was not trading Hormel Foods on a 10 minute, but let's look at a daily. So I got long uh, Hormel, Hormel Foods, got long via bull put spreads. See so you knock. We got a buy here on knock at this, these areas of price structure. You can see how we reacted. Boom to the upside, boom to the upside, medium sized boom to the upside. Still playing out, but we have earnings. BMY. Uh, the email address is support at seasonal swing trader. BMY. So we had a sell signal here. Huge move down today. Sell here. We had had a move down. Let's see what else we had. We had uh, sell signals coming into price structure. That's what it's all about. Having those multiple areas of confluence. Tyson. There's a sell signal here in the price structure. Sell signal there in the price structure. Corn, oh, C, Citigroup. Um, so we had a sell signal coming into earnings. I don't trade really around earnings unless we have a very, very solid setup. Here we have um, see these, these buy signals down here. Nice trade to the upside. Last sell signal was back in June. Ended up trading lower. And if you're sell selling call credit spreads, ended up being a very nice little trade. Coffee. Coffee, coffee. <clears throat> so we had a buy, nice buy signal here to the upside. Sell signal back in September. Buy signal back in June. Look, we don't need to be, we don't need to be in a thousand trades at one time. It's all about picking quality over quantity. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You can use it for weekly trading as opposed to day trading. That's that's what we're looking at right now. I hope I've answered that. Uh, Joseph is um, we can look at weekly charts. We can look at daily charts. So I am trading. I am swing trading using this methodology um, trading using options, either debit spreads. Most most of the time credit spreads. But absolutely. Yeah, I, I in fact, I encourage you to swing trade. The signals. I think it's going to be a higher uh, probability, higher win rate, unless you really have your day trading dialed in. We all know how how difficult day trading is. So if you're brand new uh, in your journey, wherever you are, I would certainly encourage swing trading. Get comfortable with that. Then maybe go down to the four hour. Do swing trading off the four hour, and uh, then you can get into the lower time frames if you're interested in uh, doing any type of intraday trading. Uh, yeah, I'll look at uh, some four hour charts for you. Let's go. Uh, you wanted to look at some of the yen cross pairs. Let's go to four hour. Uh, CAD yen. So, <clears throat> excuse me, CAD yen. We have a short just set up right here today. Last short was right here. No, these do not repaint. Short signal here. See what we had before that. Buy signal right here. I don't know about you, but those are looking pretty sexy. Uh, Euro yen. Euro yen. So we had a buy here. It may have not been a profitable trade. Had a sell here. Nice trade. Sell here. Nice trade. Sell here, maybe something in there, maybe stopped out, choppy. Sell here, nice trade down to support. Uh, U.S. Mexican, U.S. Peso here. We have three signals in this little window. Let me close that. So we got four buy signals. We got a buy signal right here, upside. Buy signal here, upside. Buy signal here, upside. Buy signal here, upside to side, up, up, upside to sideways. Does the software draw the up down entry arrows? Yes, the software 
So as you saw the slides, they'll look a little bit different uh, depending on what platform you have. But yeah, the, the these are not like hand drawn right here. The, these are drawn by the program. All of the uh, platforms have the arrows. Some of them, I think um, one of them is a little bit different. Uh, Trade Station, maybe they will actually do it on the chart, but the, most of the others do it on, down here in a separate pane. And there's a couple of the platforms that don't do the lines. Uh, it's uh, Toss does not do do the line. This uh, bullish or bearish divergence line. Oh yeah, the TPI fast slow line. Sorry, I forgot that. Um, so basically, uh, this could be comparable to maybe like a MACD, but it's a proprietary indicator. Um, you'll notice that. So this is the fast line. This is the slow line, and you can you can edit um, all of that if you wish. We'll go to edit, and we can change the arrow sizes, uh, change the colors and, and whatnot, and then the style. If you want to differentiate, maybe you want to make them yellow and black or whatever, so you know what the, the uh, fast and slow line are. Um, this is more of an aggressive uh, entry exit method. You'll notice that sometimes the fast slow line will catch a move that the uh, TPI did not. Sometimes it catches it a little bit earlier, like uh, you know, right around in here. We didn't get a sell signal, but it caught you know, it caught a decent little move down. But sometimes uh, it, it's you know, it'll be a little bit lagging and it won't uh, you know, you'll when we get the cross, it might be a day late and a dollar short. So that would just take some experience based on your own personal preferences. You can use it, you know, when you're in trend trades. So if you take a trade off of the TPI, that's why I would encourage you to master first. Then you can get into the weeds of the TPI. Uh, fast slow line. It's not, you know, an absolute requirement, but when you get in some of those trend trades, you may want to eyeball those to help kind of clue you in of possible exit. Um, so another uh, good question, once a trade is in, is there a signal to get out? Uh, no, there's no signal uh, other than what we talked about. So if you get an opposite divergence signal, that would be a time to get out or at least tighten stops. If, um, you know, the other is to exit at your target points. Now, what we are working on and everybody that's that is included in the package today, we'll get this uh, once it's released. We're working on adding uh, lines, uh, price lines or levels, if you will, that will have a stop and two targets. So that may help you if that's what you're looking for. So when we see the arrow print, we're gonna, we're building, uh, we're having our programmer work on something where you'll have levels come in. If you choose, we can hide them uh, if we don't want that. But the stop is not going to be, say, a tick below the swing low or a tick above the swing high. It's going to be based on an ATR. So it'll, it'll have a multiplier that can be manipulated by the user. So if the ATR is, I don't know, on a four hour chart of the US peso, if the, if the uh, ATR is uh, 50 pips, uh, you can choose one ATR, two ATR, three ATR, and so on to give you that buffer. Because we're now we're trading in line with expected volatility of the current market. As far as targets, and this is gonna this is a little bit trickier, but on this and say in this situation, we're gonna have target one. What we're working on a price level to be the last swing high right here. Second target will be the the second to last swing high. So what we what would this this would look like? Let me see if I can draw this without screwing anything up. It would look like here is your stop. Here is your target and somewhere around in here. And then here is your target two. That's what we're aiming to do. Does that sound good? It will run on multiple instruments simultaneously as well as multiple time frames. Pat. Uh, I, I can't show the scanner right now because I'm not logged into Thinkorswim. TradingView, unfortunately, does not have a scanner. 
do the scanner for Thinkorswim, TradeStation, and NinjaTrader 8. For those that own it, you can log in now, get the access to that scanner. We're at 17 units sold, 17 units sold. How long do I do? How long do your swing trading typically take? Um, really just depends on the market movement. Again, you know, like uh, you know, if I get into a trade, like for instance, um, what trade am I? So we were in taking trades off on all right, overstock. I was long that that didn't have a signal. Let me look at DNO. It's another trade that I was long. Okay, so I was long DNO. I've been long DNO. And you know, target if I'm buying the underlying is is going to be up here, would be up here. <clears throat> but I sold out of the money put credit spreads, and you can see that we just traded sideways. This is actually a four hour. Let me go to daily. So I'm trying to find one that we had a signal. Let's look at say let's look at the one that I just got into HRL. So our first target would be up here. Notice how that lines it nicely with the 200 day. So how long am I going to be in? It just depends on if Hormel wants to explode to the upside. It may be stubborn and trade to the trade sideways. But if I'm selling out of the money, put credit spreads, you know, I might be out, uh, you know, it might take me longer for that premium to evaporate. If we get an explosion to the upside, it will take less time. So my, my hold time would be shorter. It all just depends on volatility. Uh, you know, as you know, premium uh, for trading options, there's a lot of things that affect the premium inside that option. Uh, volatility, earnings, news that's going on in the world. It all just depends. Hard to say. On my chart, what is the blue line indicator second up from bottom bottom? Oh, this is just an RSI. Um, you don't need that. Don't need that RSI. I just have that on there. Uh, just accustomed and used to it. Gives me a little second confirmation. Gives me a second confirmation. Uh, James, should I have any problem there? Uh, email me at seasonalswingtrader.com forward slash pro or I'm sorry, that's the link. Email me at support at seasonalswingtrader.com and um, I'll, I'll hold a spot for you. My, I'm not going to be able to help with that payment this evening, but my support guy will be in in the morning and he can help process that for you uh, either manually or over the phone or something of that nature. Yeah, Victor, I, I do the same thing. Um, I, I run this on multiple platforms. So uh, just like a, another uh, indicator I have, I run this on TradingView, Thinkorswim, MT4, all at the same time, all day, every day. I do have I do have TradeStation and NinjaTrader 8. I just don't use them as much, but you can load it on all five indicators. They're your indicators or, or your platforms. So this, as far as the scanner works, each of it's going to be different based on the platform because they all work differently. Uh, Ninja and, and TradeStation are, are a bit more powerful than Toss. Like I love Thinkorswim, but when it comes to programming and the scanner function, it's just not as powerful as Ninja or TradeStation. So with Thinkorswim, you're only going to be able to load um, you, you need to keep the scan under 100 symbols. As far as I know, with NinjaTrader 8 and TradeStation, you can run a uh, scan on, on higher symbols. But uh, I, I cover that in the installation guide. You know, create your watch list, whether it's stocks, futures, Forex, uh, whatever scanner uh, watch list you may run your scan on those watch lists and, and try to keep them under 100. And uh, it works fine. It will populate everything that has displayed a buyer sell signal, and you can specify how many bars you want it to go back. So if you left it at one, you're running that scanner, um, you know, every day constantly. 
you're going to, you might miss, you know, let's say uh, you had a buy or sell, uh, you had a TPI buy or TPI sell on a chart. Well, the next day it may drop off, might drop off the scan results. So you can put, I want to see everything that has a TPI buyer sell signal for the last five bars, 10 bars, 15 bars. And on a daily chart, that is obviously each bar represents a day. On a weekly chart, each bar represents a week. Um, and then, you know, if you drill down into, uh, you know, hourly, it's going to be last 10 hours, um, you know, so on and so forth. Hope that makes sense. Uh, Larry, I'm not sure. Probably heading into the weekend, uh, we'll bring it down. Uh, I, I don't want a lot of support tickets. There shouldn't really be any, but I know, understandably, people will have questions. And so we want to make sure we answer everybody, especially going into the weekend. Um, you know, I, I, I will do my best to address anybody's uh, inquiries, um, you know, over the weekend. But I can't make any promises that I'm going to be just glued to my uh, inbox on Saturday and Sunday. But I, I will get back to you. Uh, tsunami. I like your name there. Um, I don't have it on MT5 at this time, but, um, you know, never say never. We may, you know, not going to rule it out. We may add it to MT5 if we get enough demand, but we just have, we literally, um, I think you're, you're probably one of the first ones, maybe the second I've asked about MT5. Yep. You're welcome, guys. All right, well, I hope everybody has a great uh, rest of your evening. Go relax, go chill, uh, or maybe the rest of your day or afternoon, wherever you are in the world. I really appreciate you attending. This is fun. I love this stuff. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll show you. Um, so here's the um, inside again, indicator, scanner, installation guides, PAP course, all of your chart, uh, all of your, um, resources bonuses cheat sheets go ahead and grab it i mean come on you saw you saw the uh trades today on the minute five minute ten minute charts and uh join reach out if you have questions and uh let's have a great year together and i appreciate your time and your interest so take care everybody be safe in the markets and in health best of best wishes to you Good luck, good trading, and I hope to see you guys on the inside. Take care.